Hello, buddy. Welcome back to the channel. I've got my good friend John Smulo here, and John has an excellent YouTube channel. And what's the name of your YouTube channel? Uh, American Entrepreneur in the Philippines, a name that you uh, gave me, so appreciate that. My pleasure. So please check out his channel, subscribe, and share his videos. A lot of really good information on those uh, on those videos. So, um, so John, I wanted to ask you a few things about back in America. Um, when was the last time you were in America? Like five years ago? No, about three and a half years ago, January yeah. 2020. Okay, so January 2020. And you're just back there visiting family and... Actually, that's when I moved here. So, that's when you moved here? Yes, so wow. I, I started coming to the Philippines in 2019, three times, kind of back and forth. And then I moved here January 2020. I already had a return ticket to go back in April 2020, but you know, a lot of unexpected things happened in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, shortly after I moved here with the lockdown and the pandemic. So how did you end up coming to the Philippines? What was your, when did it first cross your mind? Like, because you had a successful business, you still have in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And you had a great life in California, I'm sure. And then all of a sudden, you know, somewhere down the line, you say, you know what, I'm going to just move to the Philippines. It probably started about three years before I actually moved here, and my intention wasn't to move to the Philippines when I first had the idea. So basically what would happen, I have a digital marketing agency in the Silicon Valley, and I would be working with employees out of our California office during daytime hours, and it's expensive to have employees in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, California just by itself is a pretty expensive place to live. And so my thought was that, hey, I gotta reduce cost. And so for a number of years, I would outsource to countries like India, Russia, Ukraine, Philippines, and I would kind of lower my cost somewhat just by spreading employees between uh, the US and overseas. But it meant that I was really up day and night in different time zone, working with California employees during the day, working with people overseas at night. And so after more than a decade of living like that, I finally thought- A decade, wow. More than a decade. So I thought enough is enough. I gotta find a better way to live my life where I'm not working so many hours. And so I had the idea that I was gonna pick one of those countries where I had a lot of experience outsourcing work and where I really enjoyed working with the people, where the cost made sense and where communication was pretty straightforward. And so I settled on the Philippines, not because there wasn't a lot of great people in those other countries as well, but because I just love working with the people in the Philippines and their English uh, was a lot easier with communication than some of those other places. But what happened is I wound up coming over here uh, to you know open up the office and I just fell in love with the Philippines and the people. Uh, of course, there was a Filipina involved. Yeah, that was my next question. <laughs> yes, uh, and so it really became about you know business and relationship, uh, you know, simultaneously, and that's that's how I, I came over here. So you came over here for business, like me. I came over here to survive, and then it just happens that you met somebody. Yes. And now you're happily married, mm -hmm. um, and so many people that I've met, guys our age, they come over here. With sometimes they just want to survive like I did or they want to do a business opportunity mm -hmm. and they find out when they come over here that the dating options are totally different than what they had back in America and all of a sudden they meet some wonderful woman mm -hmm. and next thing you know they're happily married and it happens again and again yeah and so you're not a passport bro you know you came over here kind of like me and mm -hmm. did you even think that you, when you came over here for the business that maybe someday you would end up getting married or falling in love or was it in the back of your mind something you wanted to have happen or did it just happen by, you know, getting lucky? Well, I, I gotta say, you know, when I was dating in California for years before I moved over here, mostly I was dating people that were from somewhere in Asia, not exclusively, mm -hmm. uh, but often China or the Philippines. Uh, and so I found that I just was naturally more drawn and attracted to women that had come from Asia. I just think connection-wise, their personality, uh, just having more of kind of a stable relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I, I found, you know, that it worked a lot better uh, dating people, you know, during that time that came from this part of the world. Uh, and I had dated Filipinas before moving here mm -hmm. as well. So I really came over here thinking that I was gonna stay living in the US. 
Uh, but uh, when I came over here, it wasn't surprising at all that I met someone that was over here uh, because I, I just felt far more connected to you know people in this part of the world. There are a lot of Asians in San Francisco. I mean, there's a whole Chinatown there, so there are a lot yeah. of people from Asia in America now. Um, and so when you came over here and for business, mm -hmm. And did things work out for you right away? You said, you know what, this is where I want to stay, or did it take a while for you to be convinced? Or Nah, I, to be honest, so when I came here in 2019, uh, the first of three times in that year, from the moment I stepped off the plane, I just knew this was my new home. Hmm. And so when I had to go back to California, I actually felt mad, like, I do not want to go back to the US. I really just want to stay living here. And then I came back a second time, a third time in 2019, and it was really about uh, incorporating the business. I have uh, what's called a one-person corporation over here. It's a new uh, legal structure since 2019 where foreigners could own a business 100%. And so it's my now wife that was really helping me to lead the team. And 2019, while I was still back and forth from California, who helped me set up the corporate structure and all those type of things. So I really knew from the very beginning that I was going to change my plans. I wasn't just going to have an office in the Philippines uh, to help lower costs for my California office, but that this was really going to be my new home. Well, you did it the hardest way. You've only been here like what, three years, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in three years time, you built a business from scratch. You know, even though you had the same thing in California, you built a new one over here. Sure. And then you decided to open restaurants too. Mm -hmm. And how many, how many delicious delis do you have? Uh, two right now. You have two, yes. two delis on top of your other business, Yeah. which is just amazing. I mean, you did it the hard way. Yeah. And, 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 and there is challenges with that. Yeah, so, I so. can't imagine. But that's why I recommend anybody that's thinking about opening a business over here, you got to watch John's videos. A lot of good information there. And so you've got it all sorted out. You've got like 30 people working for you. How many employees do you have? Yeah, yeah, about that. Uh, and, and I wouldn't say I have it all worked out, but I'd say that year by year, I, I really have it more and more worked out. So I will, you know, read expat, uh, expat uh, you know, comments on Facebook groups and stuff like that. And all of them will say you would have to be crazy or stupid or insert any other you know negative perspective to start a business in the Philippines and I understand why people feel that mm -hmm. way but uh, for me there's challenges starting a business no matter where you are in the world uh, including California where I'm from there's some unique challenges here but there's also some unique opportunities I actually mm -hmm. think it's far easier to start a business in the Philippines than it is in a lot of Western countries. Just the, the you know, barriers to entry are so much lower, but there is a lot of big differences with work culture and other things like that. How do you manage still having Purple Cow in San Francisco when you're living here permanently? Is that difficult to organize things like hiring people and business? And it seems like that would be difficult. You know, I've let that company shrink somewhat. So that's, you know, naturally reduced, you know, some of those challenges as, you know, uh, positions have kind of closed down there. I've just opened them up over here. Uh, but no, I, I have a great uh, group of people that are there that really keep things going without me there. I think because I've been there for so many years before coming over here that, you know, I still have our first client from 15 years ago and wow. a number of others from 12, 10 years ago that have really helped, you know, support the business over the years. So it hasn't been too hard. The challenges have really been more over here in the Philippines. Have you thought about scaling it up and like going to open up in other cities, for example, within the Philippines or in Asia? Absolutely, uh, especially in the Philippines. So where I live in Cebu City, there's so much competition for talent. You know, so I originally started my YouTube channel just because I was thinking about how do I find new clients and I wanted people to really see uh, who I was and who our team was. But then as I came over here and I saw how much competition there is to find uh, the most talented employees to do outsource digital marketing and software development like we do, the channel became really important for just recruiting as well and, mm. you know, Filipinos finding, uh, you know, my vlog and finding, you know, a bit of what it would be like to work with us uh, through the vlog as well. But 
it's still super competitive. You know, there's huge multinational companies uh, within, you know, just a one, two, three kilometer radius over here that are, you know, really competitive for talent. It feels like I'm back in the Silicon Valley where it's also super competitive for, you know, finding the best employees. So I've thought about places uh, like Dumaguete, you know, where you are, you know, it's a university uh, town there. I thought about, you know, places like Makati and Manila and, uh, you know, Ilo Ilo. There's really a lot of um, potential spots to open up another office here. So I, I definitely plan on that, uh, you know, probably over the next year. I've heard that in a lot of countries uh, around the world, like China, for example, and Japan, their economy's on the verge of crashing because of the demographics, mm -hmm. that people aren't having children, you know, there's not enough workers to fill the jobs, mm -hmm. and uh, the women are deciding not to get married. Whereas here in the Philippines, I read somewhere like the average Filipino is like in their 20, 27 years old, so right. they have big families over here, they speak English, a lot of them have a college degree, so it's really untapped, mm -hmm. you know, for companies like yours to come over here yeah. and find people that are, you know, the pay is low and they're educated mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of potential, I think, for this country that you don't see in other places. It's, it, it's so true. So I think that the Philippines is wide open in terms of business opportunities. I know a lot of people don't look at it that way from overseas, which is great. No. Don't look at it that way. It makes it easier for guys like me that are you know, over here, but I think the Philippines will absolutely continue to develop and grow. There's so many places like the US or even places closer to where we are in the Philippines, like Singapore, that just really are looking for more people to do work mm. uh, for different reasons. Maybe, you know, a lot of people haven't wanted to go back to work after the pandemic or in countries like Singapore that have thriving economies. They just have such a small population and they're really looking where they can outsource jobs. So mm. I think companies like mine, you know, in California, we're a digital marketing agency and focused on the higher end of the market there, we charge a lot, but through the Philippines company, we're doing the same quality of work, but at about 70, 80% lower costs. So a lot of companies that are looking to outsource, uh, whether it's marketing or to find a new accountant, whatever the job may be, are looking to companies like mine where they could really lower costs, mm. but still find more uh, employees that, that are able to do a great job. Now, uh, going back to America, like, do you have any plans to visit America again, like in the, in the coming years? Or are you going to go back like once a year to visit family and friends? Or do you, um, how does that work in your life? Yeah, that's a great question. So I had planned on going back you know, once or twice a year when I first came here. Mm -hmm. And then with the pandemic and everything that went on, I haven't been back once. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, I do plan to go back uh, probably once a year. Uh, you know, I have family there that I miss a lot. And so all the time we're doing Facebook video chats and stuff like that to keep in touch, but I just really miss seeing them in person. So. I think I'll probably go back, you know, once a year, starting from this year. And that's why I'm thinking I'm going back in October. Mm -hmm. um, and what about your wife? Will you take her with you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so she just got her uh, U.S. you know tourist visa. Really? Yeah. Now tell me about that. Like, how difficult was it to get that? Because that's something I want to get for Jen. It's difficult. Uh, so you know, it's one of those things where, for whatever reason, people just make it really hard on Filipinos that want to travel to places like the US, even if they're married to an American citizen, which mm. I think is ridiculous. Uh, so she really had to study a lot, the kind of questions people would ask, how to answer, what to answer. Uh, there's some good Facebook groups um, out there of people that have been through the process or going through the process. And so she you know, really took it seriously to make sure she would know everything to expect how to respond, you know. What. Well, how does it work? Do you go like the embassy in Manila and get grilled or yes. is it how many times? Uh, you go one time to be grilled. So you have a lot of paperwork to fill out and then uh, they receive it. And then, you know, for us, it took about three, four months till she got an appointment. And then it was, it was multiple people that grilled her. So you kind of go through, you know, Give me an idea of some of, the, some of these questions that they're asking, for example. Well, it's a lot of the kind of stuff, you know, that you would expect. Why are you going there? 
how long are you going there? But they're also really wanting to look at bank accounts and their personal bank accounts, not just their husband's, you know, bank account. They want to know what you do for work. You know, if you're planning on coming back, a lot of different things like that. I think they're really looking at, you know, how you respond, if you're looking at them in the eye and, you know, just kind of really a lot of crazy uh, stuff that I think is nonsense. You but know, we it, got thousands of people crossing the border every day that are being welcomed with open arms. A, a, and absolutely. We, and you and I can't bring our wives to America easily. It's yeah, just, they really make it hard. It's frustrating. So I think what made it a little bit easier for us is, uh, you know, we have the restaurants, Delish Deli. Those are 100% in my wife's name. She runs those. Uh, you know, I have Purple Cow, my company over here, that's 100% in my name. I own those. We have a condo in our name, a car in our name. Mm. And so we had a lot that we could show that, hey, you know, our life is in the Philippines. We don't want to live in America. <laughs> that's right. We don't want to live in America. Uh, and so I think that gave us a little bit of an edge. I definitely don't want to discourage people. What's the cost? What do they charge you for that? I forget. Approximately. Uh, is it in the thousands? Or no, is it no, 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 no. I think it's, you know, one to three hundred dollars. Oh. If my wife was here, I'd ask her. Uh, but no, it wasn't uh, that expensive. Uh, my apologies if I'm remembering That's okay. uh, wrong. My wife, you know, kind of took care of figuring out that. You know, so how do they let you know that you're approved? They let you know on the spot. So oh really? Yeah. So so basically, you go into the embassy and uh, you know, there's everybody in there together. You hear the other people being interviewed, what questions are being asked, how they respond, and then at the end of it, they say yes or no. Like, are you right with her? Were you with her, or is she by herself? They wouldn't allow me in there. Oh. So you know, we got a hotel across the street, and uh, you know, she had to go in there by herself on top of it all. So you know, right on the spot, but then you don't know: are they going to give you a one-year visa, six-month visa, ten-year visa? Is it going to be single oh. entry, multiple entry? Uh, so even though you know my wife was told on the spot you're approved, she didn't know how long it would be or if it was multiple entry, different things like that. What did they give her? Ten year multiple entry. Ten years. Yeah. Wow. So that's about you know. Wow. I, I think the best you can get. That's the best you can get. Yeah. Huh. Absolutely. So it's good news. Yeah, that's really uh, good but news. But she said you know it was pretty much fifty fifty, uh, the yeses and the noes, maybe a little bit more noes. Uh, so I don't want to discourage people that would, you know, want to do this. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's not a guaranteed yes. I think, you know, the, the trick is just be honest. I you know, because these people talk to people, or these they interview people every day, they're lying to them. Yeah. And they're probably good at picking that out. So if you're honest and say, you know, like for Jen and I, we'd like to go for three weeks, see my family. Mm -hmm. I was going to buy a car on Craigslist mm -hmm. and just tour around, like take her to Vegas, take her to Grand Canyon, yeah. to Utah, some other places, mm -hmm. and then sell the car and come back. Yeah. And like, you know, three weeks would be enough, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd be ready to come back after three weeks. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, we don't want to live in, in, in America. You know, nothing against America, but I just love it here. It's like you. This Absolutely. is my life here. This is where I want to be. Same. You same. Know, and my wife's family's here too. Yeah. So take this video of you saying that to the interview, that'll be yeah. uh, helpful, you know, because I think that's one of the big things they're looking for is, mm. you know, somebody going over truly as a tourist or are they wanting to fly over and stay over there? Well, it gives me hope because I thought it was going to be much more difficult than that. So that, a lot of paperwork to fill out, but that's, so, can you use an agency or you have to do it yourself? You could use an agency. I actually used someone from the U.S. that did a terrible job. Uh, oh. And so we wound up having to do it all over again. And that, oh. that almost sabotaged the whole process. So the questions are really easy enough that anyone can answer. Uh, it's just taking the time to do it. So if hmm. I could do it over again, I'd probably recommend not using an agency because you make sure you're really filling out everything correctly. Oh, you, can you type it out or do you have to handwrite it? Uh, I'm pretty sure you got to handwrite it with the, the yeah. form unless you find a template with the same forms. Yeah, because my 13 AVs at a time, that's the reason I'm here now. They gave us two pieces of paper, both sides had questions and stuff on there. And they said, okay, this one here, we need three copies of, and this right. one here, we need four. And so, so I just, no, no, you have to hand write it right. three times, and this one you have to hand write it four times. Yeah. 
you know, so it was crazy, you know, I mean. It's a lot of work and you want to make sure you don't forget anything. So that's why, you know, it's not as easy as it looks because even if you forget one thing, you're going to have to be applying and waiting another three, four months to get another interview. Hmm. And it just seems so unfair when someone from like Germany or Poland or Mexico can just come right in, you know, mm. have a nice little vacation, show their passport the, at the border and... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's especially discriminatory uh, where you wouldn't even let the spouse of an American citizen Yeah, that really come bugs me. That bugs me a lot. Absolutely, yeah. Because you know, when you see all these immigrants, and I, I sympathize with these people, these migrants right now that are coming. I understand they have horrible lives and they just want to you know, better their life for their family. Mm -hmm. But they're coming over in the thousands and they're letting them in and they're getting to stay, mm -hmm. you know, at least until they have their, their uh, immigration or their um, meeting with the court. Mm -hmm. And when I just want to come for three weeks and take my wife to Vegas, mm -hmm. you know. I know, I definitely mean, not, not And also fair. the fact that we're, the Philippines is being kind enough to let America come over here and open up all these bases, nine of them now, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, Philippines is doing that. You think you could loosen things up a little bit for Filipinos to travel to America. Yeah. And so what if a few of them stay? Yeah. And, and we allow, you know, or the Philippines allows tourists to be over here for years and years yeah. on a tourist visa. Yeah, three years on a tourist visa. And they, they welcome us here. Yeah. You know, we're well, I mean, I actually feel welcoming. When I go down to immigration, when I was here for three, for three years, I had to go to Thailand for a couple of days, come back and start another three years. You know, they, they know what you're doing. They have no problem with it at all. Yeah, yeah. You know? And Filipinos are great. I, yeah, I mean, they surely are. they could look at the stats of Filipinos living in the U.S. and say these are great, wonderful, family-oriented, hardworking people. So it just must come down to the dollars. Yeah, it must do. Anyway, John, thank you so much for the interview and sharing your time. And best of luck with everything, you know. And uh, my pleasure. Hope to see you soon. But you owe me a trip. You got to come over and see me next time. You're you know? right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on the channel, and I appreciate. You and Jen stopping by to see me while you're here. Yeah, and by the way, the hat looks great on you. Not bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later, buddy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please check out John's channel. Bye.